be a cyclist is to be a student of pain. Pain is a big fat creature riding on your back. The farther you pedal, the heavier it feels. The harder you push, the tighter it squeezes your chest. The steeper the climb, the deeper it digs its jagged claws into your muscles. If there is any doubt that Lance Armstrong is indeed Payne's valedictorian, you need only look at the test results. While at the top of his game, he was nearly felled by the great equalizer, cancer. What's amazing is not that he beat the disease. That, to a certain extent, is a matter of fate. What's truly inspiring is that he came back, and that he came back even better than before. Stronger, smarter, faster, and more determined than ever to be a champion. What is it exactly that makes Lance a champion? A better body? A better bike? Well, there's Lance the athlete who possesses the grit and raw determination to go out and inject every ounce of his being into the prospect of being a winner. Then there's Team Lance, a largely unsung group of behind the scenes heroes who exhibit the same dedication and commitment to making Lance a winner as Lance does. We came along and, and looked at every aspect of cycling and not just the rider and the team but every piece of equipment all the way down to the to the nuts and bolts i know it sounds impossible to do but we looked at the big things the frame the wheels the hard pieces but also the little pieces how to make the bike you know, as light as we could as strong as we could as safe as we could the good news is that it continues to work for us and the even better news is that it hasn't worked for anybody else the talent pool from which Lance draws is many layers deep and represents some of the sharpest minds in technology, sports physiology, statistical analysis, and aerodynamics. The experts interact with each other like a Formula One development team, hence their name, the F1 group. They meet wherever they can to share vital improvements and analysis. That's the, bike that he, that's the position he used at the Tour de France. Even though you say, OK, we got new hard points, you start with a new construction? The smooth surface, as, as you get smoother, you're, you're picking up speed. Mm -hmm. The texture's hurting you. Much of the technology the F1 group brings to racing is first tested in a wind tunnel, an environment originally designed to test aircraft components. What we're doing here today is testing members of the uh, Discovery Channel Pro Cycling team, uh, attempting to tweak their aerodynamic positions, attempting to improve some of their bike and equipment through measuring their aerodynamic drag. Oh, wow. Even what might seem like minor position changes, like an extended thumb or elbow or a slightly higher stance in the saddle, contribute significantly to wind drag. Yes. Better? Yeah. On. Okay, tunnel coming on. Go ahead and start pedaling. But in a race like the Tour de France, where a rider covers over 2,000 miles and spends almost 90 hours in the saddle, it can be the difference between winning and losing. Look at that screen up there. When, he, when it shows him from behind, he is absolutely rock solid. That looks great. Can you go down, cadence, a little bit? 105, too high. Okay, Lance, nice job. Coast down at your comfort. We'll come in and make the change. You know, if you could bring the bars in, too. I mean, not now, but, you know, he's talking about going towards that. I mean, if your road bike is 58, and this is only half a centimeter farther. It's going to be 1.5 farther than your road bike. Yeah. It's going to be, or it should be. It's going to be right now. Precious seconds are the currency that a professional bike rider trades in and a few grams of weight or a slightly more aerodynamic component may mean going into a monster climb like the Col de Mont with a little more of that currency in the bank. We have a calculation that takes into consideration the, the grade of the hill you're climbing, the weight of the rider, the density of the air, the rolling resistance of the wheels. So look what happens when Lance goes to the drops. Watch the numbers come down. 
It's amazing. It's uh, like 40, your speed boot goes from about 40 to 40.7 kilometers an hour. That's huge. It's a lot. It's a huge difference. Yeah. And it's all, it was just all out there, just ready to be taken. So it's significant from there to, to here, when extended, is a pretty significant savings. And then two centimeters out. Lance takes an active role in assessing every detail. And then when you crouch yeah, on you the could, load, When you crash, you could huge yeah. you could hear it. It was yeah. so big. And what's my drag in here? I have to look. I have we to just look had at the it. numbers. Your, your, your drag was 3024 was the best. Armed with a giant propeller and a few million dollars worth of scientific equipment, on this day, Team Lance was able to make a great technical discovery. A series of minute changes in Lance's position on the bike would save one minute 36 seconds over the course of the time trial at the Tour de France. In fact, virtually everything is tested in the wind tunnel, from body position to the shirt on Lance's back. When we look at a parallel as a piece of equipment, one of the interesting things in studying in the wind tunnel, we found that um, two thirds of the drag comes off the body, whereas only a third comes off of the bike itself. We recognize a huge opportunity to help the athlete's body be as um, efficient as possible. Similar to the way a golf ball is designed, there's actually a texture on the golf ball, the dimples. And what the dimples do is they actually help the ball go farther and faster. The dimples create a sort of artificial uh, turbulent boundary layer um, increasing the surface friction of the ball itself. But the, the trade-off is that that flow as it wraps around the ball sticks to the ball a little bit better so that by the time it peels off the back of the ball, there's a much lower pressure drag coming off the back. We found that we could essentially apply the same principle to different parts of a cyclist's body. When Lance's arm slices through the air, it creates a low pressure zone directly behind his arm, which creates drag. Applying a dimple texture to the surface, just like on a golf ball, shrinks the trailing low pressure zone. This reduces aerodynamic drag and allows him to go faster. We found that certain objects of, of certain sizes, they need to be in a textured finish. You know, cylinders that are about the size of biceps, about the size of a lower quadricep. Um, so we definitely don't want to put uh, just simply a smooth surface over the entire body, and we don't want to put a rough surface over the entire body. We really want to mix it up a little bit and make sure we get every surface of the body tuned with just the appropriate texture. There's been over a thousand hours of research and development time that's gone into it, three hours of which has been exclusively spent in the wind tunnel. So the air is going to flow over Lance's back here, and then at a certain point it's going to separate. So we actually reduce this uh, back seam to lower so that the air is going to flow across and then lift off before it hits that seam. In order to prepare for the Tour de France in July, Lance begins training in November, a full eight months before the race. He'll ride an average of 450 miles per week. In a training season, that's over halfway around the globe. You look at me, I'm going to be out here six hours. I just been doing this for 14 years, I still love it. However, with all the training and all the painstaking attention to detail, a rider is never sure to win. What is it, a bird? It's a, it hurts. There are always variables. Blink a bunch. It's a big, nasty black oh. bug. Was it that big? Did you see it? It was a big black yeah. bug, yeah. You probably got it. Feeling better now? Screw the science. Right there it is. Planet. Right there. It? Still alive. <laughs> Just putting my glasses on, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> God. That thing is killing me. So it just shows you, like, you know, one gram bug, you know, an ounce bug can do that. Bring a man down. Yeah.